uh, my name is Renato and uh, João. And yeah, we've been working on a project like uh, shall we say it, on Condé Nast for, I don't know how much time, but a while, let's say. And we are here to, uh, wait a second, it's not changing. Okay. Ah. Okay. And we are here to cover the um, Kubernetes is not a DevOps, uh, and we will be sharing the challenges and learnings uh, from the last years and months and things like that. <laughs> uh, using uh, creating a platform at Condé Nast, and this is not a technical deep dive. Uh, we are not here to do that. There is a lot on the way for that. Uh, and for the people that don't know, Condé Nast is one of the biggest publishers uh, in the world. And they have brands globally uh, in multiple markets. Uh, and the challenges they have since the re revolution of digital uh, is to bring everything into one global platform. Um, so, we will start by covering what we what we are finding. Uh, the findings right now, what currently we have. Um, so the focus of our uh, engagement uh, was supporting a platform. Uh, we the, we started by focusing into the U.S. platform. Um, they have a platform that uh, supports developers um, into a way of deploying their applications uh, to production. And the way they interact is using a single UI. Uh, and on that UI, they will be able to uh, create new deploys, have their pipelines and DNS records, and applying some good practices, standards for the average developer that doesn't care about how their applications is in production. Um, so this is a very simple uh, abstraction of the system. Uh, so the system is, uh, like I said before, uh, based on a UI. Uh, and that UI will interact with multiple uh, microservices that um, will structure the deployment in a way that developers don't need to, to fully understand. Uh, those services are built in Java, by the way. Um, and they start by uh, talking with a, a Jenkins instance that creates their builds. Uh, and once those builds are green, uh, they they will move in the system and be interacting with uh, the deployment uh, on Kubernetes. And once that's done, uh, it will create the DNS records on AWS. Uh, and the, all of this is managed by some pipelines that are in AWS. Uh, so this is a very simple way of showing what is there uh, in the, their environment. Uh, they have two. One, it's uh, non-prod, uh, and the other one is prod, of course. And we have like a few machines, let's say, and they are split across multiple regions. Uh, this is very important because Condenast is global, and the latency is a thing that matters for the business. And there are a lot of engineers, people that we don't interact every single day that needs to interact with the platform. Uh, and of course, they interact with uh, uh, UI. Uh, so the motto of this platform, it was just to put developer needs first. They didn't know, they didn't need to fully understand their system, but it was a safe way of um, deploying what the business needs. They didn't need to be really 
big experts in the area, but the focusing was what the business needs because Condor is not a technology company. Uh, but uh, here in the UK, um, it was built another platform and I think it was one year ago the, the companies merged. Now it's just one uh, common ask. And what happens was here was a platform. And um, the platforms are different, of course, because the developers are different. And the, the way that developers interact with the system is completely different. Uh, so developers here, they, they, they don't need to interact with the system like a UI, they don't have. Uh, and um, because of that, they interact in a different way using CLI tools. Um, so, funny enough, uh, the underlying platform is the same. And the same thing happens like six clusters, more than 100 machines with a big difference with auto scaling. Uh, so this number is not accurate at all. It depends on the day. Uh, again, three regions and more than 50 engineers. Uh, the key difference is, is like the way they interact. Um, so the motto for the CNI platform compared to the US one would be developers here will own their deployments. They will need to understand uh, the system in a way that they will need to deploy, deploy in the, their best practices. Uh, um, and however, it doesn't make sense to support two different platforms with the same underlying um, development. And so, um, so essentially, uh, we, we have these two different organizations that have come together under a single organization. It doesn't make sense to be maintaining two completely different platforms, right? Um, so one company, one platform. On one side, we have CNI, so Condé Nast International, here based in the UK, and you have Condé Nast US, uh, based in the US, with two, like, two totally different platforms. Um, so what's, what's the purpose, what's the purpose of, of, of this platform? Essentially to have a common set of tools um, and guidelines to, uh, that can serve both us, platform engineers, we don't need to be maintaining two different platforms, but also serve as the guidelines to the product engineers that will need to deploy stuff. Um, and in the end, what we aim to, to achieve is essentially the best of both worlds. We want something that can fulfill the needs of uh, engineers like we have in the US right now, um, where they don't really understand, most of them, um, what's running, like where the apps are running and how the underlying infrastructure works. But on the other hand, you need to support developers that have this dire need to understand and to fine tune their applications. Um, so with these two different approaches, you still have the, to deal with the, the, the learning curve that, uh, that bringing these together um, will generate. So learning is a key element over here. Um, and it's something that the platform engineers will need to um, support. Um, so suddenly, the focus of our engagement kind of changed. So we were brought in to support and maintain the US platform. Uh, but now, we need to do it while working towards the global platform. This, of course, has a set of challenges. Um, we've highlighted a few to start with. So like the most obvious one is um, we need to support, but also we need to move forward with the global platform. Um, how, how can we balance this work? Um, uh, so like we, we can't just stop everything to build a new shiny platform, right? 
because again, uh, Condé Nast's business is made to uh, is made towards generating value to their customers, not building platforms. Um, and there are, of course, like key cultural differences. Uh, so, I mean, you, you can see where we're coming from and where we're going, where we're dealing with two organizations which have been dealing with their platforms in total different ways. Um, how can you uh, bring these developer groups together? Um, on one hand, you have, again, developers that they have this dire need to understand their underlying infrastructure. On the one hand, you have people that are interacting with the platform through a UI. So how do we avoid also a huge migration plan? So again, Condenas' business is not one of building platforms and creating new, new exciting te technology. Uh, it's about providing value to their customers with their publications. Um, how do we avoid like locking everything down, nobody deploys or ships anything, and we just move everything to this new shiny platform? So unfortunately, we don't have an answer for that. Um, but we have a few learnings that we want to, to share. So the first of all is, I mean, it's on the title. It's easy to. It's, Kubernetes is not a platform. It's a tool. Uh, and it's a tool to build platforms, but it won't solve the cultural uh, problems. So it's a starting point to make the shift. Uh, one other thing was neither side was wrong. So there are developers, they, they really know what they are doing and they really need to have different, um, different things. The other hand, the most junior ones, they probably would want to use the UI. So what we need to do is empower them. Um, so yeah, uh, having a simple, easy developer, it's not bad. Uh, most of the times people think it's bad, it's, bad. it's not. Uh, because it, it, this, is, this is not a shift at all. It, it will take time. Uh, it's not a quick move. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be here presenting um, the next learnings in, in the near future. So that's it. <coughs> Any questions? Please be gentle. Yeah? yeah. So, <coughs> I fully agree with the sort of challenges of upscaling the development, et cetera. But with the advent of sort of the enterprise and best practices, et cetera, it seems a little bit dangerous to allow developers who are considering deployment to not considering sort of the future of how everything is going to function to create applications that are now sort of fully built on the working platform. So, so, this was, so this was essentially something that was inherited also. Like it's not something that, um, again, there are a lot of historic, like there are, there's a lot, of, a lot of historical reasons why this ended up like this. Um, our, what we're doing here is to do the best to bring both worlds together in a way where you are at least understanding of both parts of, like both ends of the system. Um, like, because on one hand, uh, you'll need to bring on board people that haven't been used, been really used to like understanding the underlying pieces of what they're deploying. Um, this will, this will of, of course take time, but if you provide them like with a golden path and with a, a, a set of rules 
and a set of guidelines which they can base like their knowledge with and then move from there, that'll, that'll basically essentially be a uh, first step. You know, like, again, this is, we don't, we don't really have like a super formula to solve like this problem. Um, to be honest, speaking with other people, we've realized that uh, other, other companies have gone through this. Um, like probably not as harsh as Condé Nast right now, but it's something that needs to be addressed in a way that it's uh, safe for both, for both ends. Like, I can, so I, it's. I can start. say a few things. So first of all, Condé Nast is a hundred year old, old company. They have things running. Yeah, their, a lot business, of their business is running. There's no way that it will stop to do something like upskilling developers. That will never happen. Um, the second thing is the business sometimes, and this is the reality check, sometimes they say you need to have this in production tomorrow. You will not have the time to create a really shiny deployment with everything perfect. No, it needs to happen. And will happen, and after that you will finish and fix and address some of the problems. Uh, and that's why the two approaches are neither are wrong. Uh, they are correct in time. So, yeah. Uh, is there any, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned Cup Fund that they, they're not a tech company. Yeah. That, that's true. But their business is now digital. Yeah. 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 When we, when we so say, when we say they, it's not. Yeah, are they changing that mindset at the sort of more senior level around actually we are a tech company to some description? Technology is helping their digital. Yeah. It doesn't mean they need to be in the tech industry of selling products and things like that. And, and building platforms. And building platforms. So like the platform should be a tool for them, like it shouldn't be their main goal. Uh, as in, like these both platforms were made to solve a specific problem. Um, the reason they're moving towards a global platform is again to solve their problems, not as like an end goal of something. When we say like Kananas is not a tech company, we say like their like their core business is not de developing technology. They're not Google or they're not. Uh, no, but they're yeah. still developing and selling digital. Products. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's you know abstracting that from your business model can be a dangerous. Uh, abstracting that that you know your your core. So like that, that, speci that specific question is more business related, yeah. to be honest, yeah. it's not yeah. something that us as consultants can... So, are they, can but I was just in, just sort of interested, mm -hmm. are they... So I can assure you this, the technology that is there is good and it's up time, it's, yeah. it's, it's not a thing from the past. Yeah. Uh, and the, the mindset of the company is not building technology, it's technology solving their problems. And like they are moving to digital, everyone knows that every single magazine or paper is moving to digital. They will need technology. So <laughs> it's a tool. It's not uh, a product in their way. Uh, product for the market, of course. So, okay, so right now, uh, by the way, I do believe they're hiring. They are, they are yeah, hiring. They right are now, hiring. So they are hiring. Um, but so right now, I don't want to lie, uh, we're around like seven or eight engineers, right? Um, maintaining both platforms right now. Um, the plan, of course, is to expand this it's team. To expand. So. The, so the general roadmap for f like to get the global platform? to get the global platform in our desired state uh, will probably be uh, a long time, like in our super shiny design state, you know. So like, like we mentioned, it's not we don't have we don't have an end date. Yeah, we have a set of goals and objectives. Yeah. Um, we've we've mentioned a few of a few over here, uh, but like a clear uh, schedule that hasn't been set yet because there's a lot of discovery going on still. Just one thing, Kubernetes is running on Condé Nast for the last two years. Is that on-prem or cloud? 
cloud. So all, both solutions are cloud AWS yeah. based. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was clear from your presentation, but are you um, maybe trying to do too much within one platform team? So typically, when I've done this kind of exercise in the past, as a core platform team, which is true, cloud, whatever, all that stuff, infrastructure, so we've kept that quite separate from the DevOps side. So we've like, we've got our boxes and partners outside them. And then we let product teams move in their own way at their own pace. So some areas might decide that we want to have our own DevOps team to share stuff. And other guys might say no. Our developers are going to understand everything and do everything. But ultimately, the core platform team doesn't really care. So and that, and that makes it even more flexible. So it, you may have done something like that, but it wasn't clear from okay. So Condé Nast is very flexible in that respect. And we try both both uh, ways, doesn't scale. It doesn't scale. No, no, I'm not saying both ways, I'm saying ultimately you're building one platform, the core platform, and you can build that way, you don't really care about the pipe. You know, you can pipe consultants in and tell people how to mm -hmm. do so stuff, but you don't really need to care about trying to manage this for an entire estate. So the model, the, model, the model that you're saying is essentially what we have right now. So yeah. both of us are part of the consultancy focused team, which is also maintaining the US platform as it is. Um, but internally, like our team of uh, eight or nine people, um, we also have, uh, no, it's more because I'm not counting it's SREs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we also have an SRE team, um, and we also have, uh, as part of this cloud platform team, um, a, a team exclusively focused on uh, developing and maintaining the Kubernetes clusters and also all the, the infrastructure changes. I've been on so that that's, team. So it's, 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 it's Sorry, it's essentially what you're saying that we have. And as uh, are like more focused on developer experience and also maintaining the current US platform as it is. Um, but yeah, but that's essentially the model, the model that you're yeah, saying. You have to keep the core platform yeah. team small, otherwise yeah. you're out. I mean, that's what we found in the model. Yeah, 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 definitely agree. Secret storage? It depends. It depends. Uh, so there's no golden answer for that. Uh, it depends on how heavy are you uh, on the databases. How so? Do you need to scale databases? How often do you need? Uh, it's an application to serve so APIs so and have a CDN in front. So what I would say is, yeah, Kubernetes in storage is good, uh, but Kubernetes won't solve your problems, architecture problems. So, so that's a different thing. <laughs> so as it is, the, the Kubernetes platform uh, only deploys stateless applications. Um, if you need some kind of state, you, the developers are responsible for um, managing their own databases, RDS, whatever that is, uh, maintaining their Terraform and applying that and depend upon it. So it's that. Um, we as a platform team are still uh, kind of responsible to support them in building the, that kind of stuff. If they need some knowledge in a, consulting, in a more consultancy focused uh, aspect, um, but that's usually sit, that usually sits outside of, of our Kubernetes classes. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.